uh, definite uh, duration to deliver any activity. So very often if you ask a contractor, for instance, how long excavation would work, they will give you not a definite answer that it will take six weeks to complete, but you would get a response in time uh, in terms of a time bracket. Now it could take anywhere between four to eight weeks based on number of different variables, including weather and uh, uh, delivery of material or availability of machinery or et cetera. So uh, program evaluation and review technique allows you to uh, uh, schedule your project when you are not uh, sure about the definite uh, time frames. Uh, now, once we have done the network analysis, uh, this information is uh, translated into a Gantt chart or a bar chart. So you would have seen uh, these charts on uh, display on a construction site. So you'll learn um, how um, to draw a Gantt chart or a bar chart. And project managers use these tools not only to manage the time, but also to manage resources, manage costs. So one of the problems which we did in the last week focused on uh, use of these bar charts to manage uh, costs, so maybe worth looking into it. Uh, we also use work breakdown structure to first of all identify what are the key tasks that have to be accomplished and then we uh, start uh, drawing sort of a precedence relationship between uh, key tasks to understand the logic. Uh, now, uh, the critical path method, uh, as I said, is quite uh, commonly used in building construction, but uh, where we start talking about linear infrastructure, so things like uh, road construction or laying the pipe where, uh, or uh, a multi-story buildings where there is a huge amount of repeatability and same task repeated time and again, uh, we, uh, I think the CPM has got some limitations and we tend to use line of balance. And um, in recent years, we have seen a push towards 4D and 5D. So linking the uh, time uh, dimension and the cost dimension with the 3D uh, design so that we can have a good overview of how the project is uh, progressing. So we will be talking about 4D and 5D later in our uh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, talking about what are the key considerations in managing any project uh, from a construction management perspective, our focus is to ensure the projects are finished on time, they are finished uh, within stipulated budget, they meet or if possible exceed the customer quality uh, expectations, uh, they are delivered in a safe working environment, right? So. Uh, this, uh, they are delivered without litigation and we are seeing this uh, list uh, uh, increasing. Now there are a lot of environmental uh, expectations from uh, management of the project. So traditionally it has been cost, time and quality has been referred to as a golden triangle. But uh, as we see uh, delivering a modern day complex construction project has a huge list of critical success factors. There is an expectation that there will be minimal impact on the end users or uh, on the nearby communities. Uh, so things like considerate contractors scheme with the focus on delivering the uh, project in a more considerate manner and things of that sort. So we are seeing that there are there's an increasing amount of expectations um, from uh, <clears throat> project management. So very often uh, within construction management we have to uh, play off uh, and, and we have to compromise sometimes one dimension to achieve other. So in an ideal situation, we would like best time, cost, safety, and, and quality. But sometimes if we get really pressed, we have to sacrifice one of the dimension to achieve others. For instance, if the client is asking you to deliver a project in the shortest possible uh, time, uh, you may have to spend a little bit more uh, cost. You may need extra machinery or people working in uh, double shifts. So you're, uh, you may have to compromise on the cost. Or for instance, if your budget is limited, uh, your time dimension may suffer. So very often, uh, a lot of our project management decision making is uh, choosing uh, a, an optimal uh, balance between time, cost, quality, and uh, safety. So uh, reflecting on uh, what uh, are the key causes of project uh, failures, uh, so uh, the first and the foremost is a uh, lack of proper planning. A construction project typically involves a huge amount of uh, uh, workforce. Uh, so uh, 
uh, uh, keeping everyone on uh, track, communicating with them. Very often organizations have different uh, communication protocols. The keeping everyone in the loop and up to date uh, is a key uh, issue. And then the lack of uh, proper organization, the way proper is, uh, organization is structured, the various communication protocols, how information is exchanged, uh, and overall organizational setup. A lack of leadership uh, providing uh, direction. So again, uh, a construction manager uh, need to uh, have a very proactive approach so rather than having a sort of a, a blame culture where um, and there is a need for a more proactive approach to ensure that uh, actions are taken on time uh, lack of control on uh, time cost quality and safety uh, right so uh, the list could go on. Now, we were talking about different uh, tools and techniques. Um, work breakdown structure is the uh, initial one. So, uh, before starting the work, so it's a, quite a simple project, the home landscaping project. Uh, you can uh, break it into key uh, tasks. So, every uh, the top level task is often referred to as a summary task and it has got uh, further breakdown. So, you can see uh, in our work package, the summary tasks include uh, get the design home landscape uh, and putting in the lawn uh, and within that there are a number of subtasks and uh, building the fence. So, very often we uh, start uh, uh, planning by looking at the uh, uh, higher level uh, activities. Let me see if we can. Yeah, so, uh, so, so looking at uh, uh, macro level activities, the uh, high level activities and uh, uh, creating a network diagram using those high level activities and then we could have a more micro level schedule looking at level two and level three of uh, activities. Uh, so this is uh, another example of a, a breakdown uh, so work background structures could look very similar to organograms, uh, so defining uh, the key work package and then various uh, subtasks uh, involved in it. Now talking about uh, the different scheduling systems, uh, it could be a number of different approaches as uh, we discussed before things like it could be uh, uh, magnetic scheduling boards or it could be more sophisticated 4D or 5D planning as, um, uh, 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 <clears throat> and, and scheduling uh, systems where you, you are integrating your design with your timeline and the cost line. Uh, so uh, while implementing an effective scheduling system, the key considerations should be that first of all, it has to be functional. Uh, so people should be easier if you are implementing a 5D without training your uh, staff appropriately, that could uh, backfire. Uh, it has to be uh, understandable, so that's one reason uh, the uh, techniques uh, such as uh, the bar charts have been uh, so popular because they are quite uh, easy uh, for the uh, teams to understand different subcontractors very often uh, they may not be using very high-end computing systems but still they could uh, very clearly see when they have to uh, uh, report uh, at the site for their work and when they need to complete and, and finish their jobs so uh, uh, un ha having an understandable schedule is important. The third thing is uh, flexibility and the last thing is uh, commitment by management uh, to make it uh, work. So you could have the uh, good scheduling system but unless it is enforced and unless people uh, are following uh, uh, the directions uh, it, it could uh, backfire. Okay, now one thing I would like to say, uh, just I have not got the uh, uh, window screen of uh, the collaborate open in front of me, so perhaps it may be useful if you have got any 
question rather than typing if you could use uh, the microphone uh, and uh, feel free to interrupt me at any point if you're not uh, clear uh, but uh, I may be missing out on your chat because that's not the window uh, open in front of me at the moment right so uh, uh, so this is a bit of a theory of a uh, Gantt chart. Uh, it has been uh, developed in the US and it has been proven very popular uh, and one of the most uh, uh, common tool to communicate the uh, time. And also uh, we have seen increasing use of uh, Gantt charts, not only for planning time, but also for planning our resources and the uh, costs. So this is an output uh, produced by a tool like a Microsoft uh, project where on the top uh, you can see the uh, summary task. So it basically provides um, a macro level view. And then uh, these um, this line over here demonstrating the duration and um, the relationships are shown here uh, between different activities. So the most of the relationships you can see uh, are finished to start. So it does matter where the arrow is originating from. So if the arrow uh, originates from the beginning, it means that the uh, relationship is start to start. So the subsequent activity doesn't need to wait for this activity to, to finish however if the arrow is originating from the end it means it's a finish to start relationship which means this preceding activity must finish before the following activity uh, would start so uh, these bar charts are used uh, and displayed uh, using different methods and here is uh, one other example of uh, the display uh, of the uh, bar charts with the time duration uh, as shown using uh, blocks. So very similar to the magnetic uh, scheduling boards. Uh, so it's uh, one of the most uh, commonly used technique within construction. It's easier to disseminate information. It's a simple to adjust the program. It doesn't uh, and not support the clear definition of interdependencies between activities. So very often uh, in a Gantt chart view or bar chart view, it's very different, difficult to see the interdependencies. As you can see in the previous example, the uh, as your activities start to grow, a typical project could comprise more than a, um, 100, 200 activities. So it's very difficult to see uh, and maybe um, one can uh, miss on. So it's not the ideal uh, view to see the interdependencies and we will see the network diagram or logic diagram is uh, much easier to understand. And planning uh, and programming uh, happens simultaneously. What um, the whole process allows you to is uh, an ability to uh, see the logic, how the work will be uh, taking place, and uh, and it basically helps start a dialogue. And uh, you, you can. So there are uh, two uh, terms which is uh, which are often used in the literature when we talk about planning and scheduling. One is uh, the planning, which refers to organizing the activities to be executed according to the execution logic, the availability of resources and uh, technical conditions. And we will be learning more about it. So how do we go about creating a network diagram? How do we add resources on top of it? Um, the second bit is the uh, programming. It is the step following the planning so it consists of definition of timings and dates uh, for the beginning and the end task. So once we, if we know the logic, we know um, the resources, the, um, the next bit is programming. So uh, it goes uh, hand in hand. Um, uh, so in terms of a, a bar charts, they are also referred to as the, the Gantt charts and the on the positive side, the advantages are they are very easy to understand. It provides visual clarity. It's a relatively small size, you can display the whole uh, project at a macro level on an ANOR sheet. It's an accepted uh, default schedule, very popular in the AEC industry, and it allows you uh, to undertake force uh, and detailed thinking. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the limitations, it's not uh, an ideal to show interdependencies between tasks. It doesn't identify the activities that are uh, critical to uh, timely completion. Um, well, again, uh, there are different uh, representations. It may be possible to indicate. So Microsoft Project, for instance, allows you to see. Um, but uh, uh, 
at a very um, zoomed in level where you're ha having a lot of activities within a project it's uh, uh, it's sometimes difficult to see the logic uh, so a lot of time, uh, a lot of uh, experienced project managers prefer uh, scheduling using pen and paper uh, at a macro level uh, so that they could have a good uh, understanding because it's uh, easy to get lost in the uh, very numerous features which project um, software offers. Uh, so, so there. So uh, uh, quite a few uh, of the limitations. So I think it's important to consider uh, both sides uh, of it. So in the first uh, class, we learn how to draw a bar chart. So to draw a bar chart, first of all, we need to have a very clear understanding of the network logic. Uh, so here uh, you have been told that this is the network logic where activity B can only begin once A has uh, finished. So A number A activity A could be an activity such as uh, laying the foundation, which is very critical, and then your B um, activity could be uh, superstructure or things of the, that sort. So uh, first of all, we learn how to uh, uh, um, manually schedule a project. So if we are manually scheduling a project, we always assume that the project starts at day zero, which uh, uh, which helps us identify the early start time. And then we add the duration. So the duration of the activities are shown in the box here. We add the duration uh, uh, to. Uh, so this activity is starting in the month zero, which is the uh, initial of the project, and finishing in month two. And then the following activities, uh, we assume, um, would start after month two. So we take this two from this box into the um, um, following boxes and then we will be adding the duration so to add one uh, uh, three and uh, to add three is five so early finish and early start uh, of activity C is five so we will be uh, talking a lot much about two types one is called the early start and the other one is called the uh, late start so early start is basically uh, how soon you can begin work on any activity uh, and late start is uh, how late you can begin work on any activity. So I was teaching earlier and I was uh, giving students an example. If you are handed out a coursework and uh, we are right now in week one and you uh, have an option, you look at the coursework and you think it's the coursework is going to take one week of my time. So right now we are in week two and you can um, begin the work based on early start time and uh, possibly you would have your initial rough draft ready by week three. So in this case, your uh, week two will be your early start time um, and week three would be your early finish. Uh, or you can just leave it to the very last and you could begin work perhaps in the week 10 uh, and to aim to finish at week 11, which will be your latest start time. So while doing any activity, we have got an opportunity to work at an earliest possible a time or we can if we have got some float we can delay it to a late start time so it's the knowledge of um, early start and late start is quite fundamental as you go about uh, scheduling our uh, project so uh, here we are trying to define what is the early start and what is the early finish time uh, and what we are doing right now in, in practice is called a forward planning or forward scheduling as we are moving in the forward direction in our network. So here uh, we can see uh, we could either uh, uh, have three or five uh, because this activity D is a merge activity. So we have to remember that while doing a forward pass, we always choose the largest of the two values. So here we will be choosing uh, five as our uh, early start time right so uh, and six so we have discussed this in the previous class I'm just repeating for those of you um, who were not there uh, but you are uh, recommended to uh, watch the uh, last week and uh, video and uh, where so this is one of the problem in the problem set so these problems are basically uh, uh, there to encourage students to uh, and a little bit practice so once you have done that uh, you can uh, you would you know from here that the activity a has um, an early start um, so it's taking place in the first two weeks so we uh, we can use our work uh, the Gantt chart here to demonstrate that uh, from week uh, or a month whatever your unit of time is from month zero to two uh, 
uh, the only work is taking place on activity A. Now once the activity A finishes uh, after month two, then uh, you can begin work on two simultaneous activity. Activity B has a duration of uh, one uh, month, so it's taking place from between uh, month two and three. So work on activity B is taking place here and activity C uh, is uh, three days activity as you can see here and uh, it is commencing uh, here. So work on activity C is taking place from month two to uh, five. Now according to this logic in work on activity D would only begin once both uh, B and C has finished. So they are finishing at this point of time and then work on activity B would take place which is just a one week activity. Right, so this is how we translate the information from uh, and the critical path analysis to a bar chart or a Gantt chart. And uh, you, you're suggested to do the problems in the first problem set, uh, which will help you reinforce. And if you're struggling, uh, you can watch the uh, uh, session recording from the last session. Right, so we, we also did discuss uh, this example uh, in uh, the first problem set where you were asked to reflect how did a project manager saved uh, two months of the time from uh, the project. So here you can see the um, before uh, Gantt chart and, and the after Gantt chart. And in the before Gantt chart, the project was uh, to be delivered uh, around in a 24 months period. And uh, in the after Gantt chart, the, uh, uh, the project is being delivered in 22 uh, Months. So basically, we have saved uh, two months of time, and we know that um, time is money. Two months would mean a lot of savings uh, in terms of a staff uh, uh, salary and also indirect costs in terms of keeping the site mobilized. So the question was how uh, are these uh, savings uh, achieved? And um, so the way uh, uh, it is uh, the changes are done is that project manager has has started by looking at the critical path which is shown by this uh, slightly darker line and non-critical activities are shown here so here you can see that non-critical activities are those activities where you have got some float so even if the project doesn't uh, get completed on seven eight and nine on time you still have got some float some time to uh, delay those activities likewise activity 11 and 12 have got some float whereas you can see the activity in the dark are those which are critical and they have got no float available. So the project manager uh, and here you can also see the resources uh, required by any activities are shown on the top. So for instance, the activity two requires four bricklayers. So the project manager has decided to transfer some of the resources from non-critical activities to uh, critical activities. So uh, the decision was taken to move uh, two bricklayers from activity seven to activity two. So now you can see activity seven in the after situation has just got two bricklayers and activity two has now got six bricklayers. So by moving resources from a non-critical to a critical activity, project manager is now being able to save time. Uh, so for instance, two was taking um, around five uh, months to complete and now in an after situation, it will be taking substantially lesser. So as a result, you can see the um, uh, critical path in our project has now changed after the um, uh, re-engineering of the resources. And uh, by the face of it, the new uh, or after uh, uh, Gantt chart looks a lot much more sensitive. There are a lot much more activities which are uh, critical in nature. So this is uh, uh, what happens once you start squeezing your project for time uh, uh, your project becomes more sensitive, more and more activities start to become uh, critical. So so uh, just a recap uh, for those of you who didn't attend, there were a few exercises uh, like those uh, just discussed in problem set one and the students were encouraged to do uh, these problems. So uh, as I said, 
each problem set uh, would have a 5% assessment weightage. So you do not need to do any fancy work. If you are attending the classes regularly, you can do those problems side by side. And if you get stuck, you can have uh, help from your colleagues and also the full timers are doing the same problem. So I'm sure they will be uh, happy to uh, help. So uh, just a bit of a background theory. I'm not going to delve too deep. Um, why use formal schedules? The modern day projects are very complex. So um, we, it helps uh, control time, cost, quality, and safety. It helps better management of um, material, labor, money, equipment, and subcontractors. It helps uh, in detailed thinking. It improves communication. Uh, uh, referring to Stephen Covey's uh, book, he suggested all the activities in our personal life need to be divided into four quadrants, urgent, important, not urgent, important. Similar sort of a logic goes on for management of the construction project. We tend to have uh, uh, a lot of activities, so it's very important where we should be uh, putting our uh, uh, efforts in. Uh, now, some of the best practice recommendations are that project managers should be distributing more and more of their efforts in uh, forward thinking, in planning what lies ahead, uh, and um, basically at some part of a, uh, uh, activities for communication and a quarter of their activities to plan and work to cost and time targets. But in practical uh, life, a lot of time is spent on communications, keeping everyone up to date uh, and very often thinking ahead uh, is an activity uh, which is not given any uh, option. So the whole idea about planning and scheduling is to ability to uh, ensure we uh, we are having projects which are designed to build and which are built to design within a, a given constraints. So thinking ahead would allow us to explore different optimization uh, situations and, and keeping everyone up to date. Now we have seen uh, within construction use of a, a different uh, planning and scheduling. So some of the uh, low end contractors use a very uh, basic graphic schedules. So a, a simple example could be a floor plan which has been marked up or colored to show the schedule. So here this is a simple plan and paint schedule, uh, a separate floor plan for each subcontractor or, uh, or the crew basically indicating. So again, um, for a very simple task, uh, you do not need uh, in the use of very complex, complicated uh, uh, planning and scheduling. So we have seen uh, use of some very informal techniques uh, for scheduling of work. And so for instance, indicating which task is to be accomplished in uh, during which period. Uh, but uh, the complex construction projects do require use of formal schedules, which are important to reduce construction time, reduce cost, material labor overhead, provides for a more continuous flow of work. Uh, it gives crews and, and subcontractors a uh, goal to work towards, and, and it helps increase productivity. Right, so I'm not delving too deep. Uh, a lot of these slides are self-explanatory. Uh, now, and as we go about uh, planning a project, it's very important to understand what is the relationship between different activities. Uh, and the most common and that we come across is a finish to start relationship, which basically means that the preceding activity A have to finish before activity B would start. Uh, another uh, um, a common one is a start to start. So here we are asking that there is no need for activity A to finish. Uh, and uh, once work on activity A has started, work on activity B could start simultaneously or sometimes we give a time lag. So we could have, for instance, a, a two weeks a time lag. So once work on activity A, which could be foundation has begun, uh, we can have and we can begin the work on the subsequent activity after a time lag of a certain and day. Uh, then and there is a finish to finish activity where the finish of two activities are tied uh, and then start to finish, which are not uh, so common. Uh, so and this is uh, how a, um, a view from a software may look like. Uh, so link bar chart. So here you can see uh, the finish to start relationship here. Again, uh, finish to start relationship between uh, these two tasks. Um, and this is an example of a start to start relationship. So this activity can st uh, uh, so this is a finish to start, but uh, the relationship between this and this activity is a uh, start to start. Here you can see a, an overlapping relationship or which is also uh, 
uh, sort of a, like a start to start with the lag lag so here the relationship is two days after starting task a task b can start so after task a you have so you can represent it like this or uh, you can represent it as a start to start relationship with the lag so you can say well uh, start to start uh, uh, and then uh, uh, two days of uh, lag and then finish to uh, start really so in the problem one, uh, I don't want to repeat, but uh, for those who missed the first session, we uh, asked them to explore different sorts of relationships. And so one of the problem in the problem set was this one. So here, um, again, if you want to uh, plan this project, we will be starting it from zero, adding two. So this will be finishing at two. Now here you can notice that there is a lag of five uh, days involved. So the subsequent activity cannot begin uh, at day two, there is a lag here, so it will be uh, two at five, and so it will be beginning at uh, day seven and seven at four, and so activity B will be finishing at uh, week 11, and the subsequent activity D uh, would start from 11, and then 11 at five is 16. Uh, now here, the relationship between B and C is uh, start to start, and uh, once work on B has started, which is in day seven, we have to leave a lag of three. Uh, so seven at three is 10 and uh, 10 at three is 13. Uh, and activity E is a merge activity. And as we were talking in case of a merge activity forward pass, we choose the largest value. So here we will be choosing uh, 16 and 16 at two is uh, 18. And, uh, 18, and then the early finish uh, time of the last activity becomes the late finish time of the last activity. So we will be moving this 18 to the box uh, over here. And then 18 take away two is uh, 16. This 16 uh, moves uh, into the boxes. Uh, so basically the late start of the um, activity in the backward pass becomes the late finish of the uh, subsequent activity. 16 take away five is 11, 16 take away three is 13. And here this 11 would get moved uh, here. Now here is a little bit tricky bit. Uh, we could approaching and the start of B from this direction would be 13 take away 3 it should be uh, 10 and from moving from here set 11 take away 4 uh, 7 so we do while doing a backward pass we always choose the smallest value so we will be choosing uh, 7 and uh, then 7 take away 5 is 2 and uh, 0 so this helps us calculate the uh, uh, early start times um, of any activity and the early finish of any activity which is shown in these boxes and the late start uh, shown in the box here and the late finish uh, shown in the uh, box here. The float is calculated uh, using a formula which is uh, it start minus early start or uh, late finish minus early finish. Is there a question? Yeah, please, if you want to uh, ask a question, use, you can use your mic. Uh, OK, and then using this, uh, we can we will calculate the float of each activity. Uh, and calculating the float basically tells us uh, which activities have a zero float, which are critical. So here we can see that activity A is on the critical path. Activity B is on the critical path. C is not critical because there is a float of three. Activity D is uh, critical and activity E is critical. So if you are managing this project, you have to be very careful with activity A, B, D and E because any delay in any of those activities would cause uh, and the overall delay so you will not be any longer able to deliver this project in 18 uh, weeks so this 18 basically indicates how long your project will take to complete so moving on uh, in terms of drawing a network diagram it's important to understand logical relationship which activities must be complete before this activity starts which activities cannot start 
that this activity is completed. So very often, uh, as a main contractor, you will bring uh, all the subcontractors uh, in one room and try to visually understand uh, how they would like to sequence their work. So there could be some negotiation, some dialogue before you draw the um, logic. Uh, and, and there are some uh, conventions. Uh, to do. Uh, also, we did discuss in our earlier uh, uh, class uh, that the project management is quite a subject, a broad subject area. It goes beyond planning and scheduling, so it includes dimensions of risk, quality, scope, uh, procurement, communication, uh, time management, integration management, cost management, and human resources. Uh, but in this uh, particular module, we are focusing uh, more on um, planning and scheduling techniques and a lot of the reading material which goes uh, and covers some of the other dimensions. Right, so uh, that was just to provide a bit of a background uh, overview to students who uh, missed the uh, previous uh, uh, session. So one of the questions uh, asked was uh, to design a simple pu uh, pump house uh, construction. Uh, so uh, in the um, problem set one, you, uh, and there was uh, this problem which was presented, the project uh, and the method statement was given here. So here, reading through it, the project will start by drilling of well, which is a four days activity. Uh, once the well has been dug, you should start a pump house construction. So the first activity here, you can see um, we are having start as a milestone activity. So this activity has a zero duration indicated duration is indicated beneath here so it's a, just a milestone activity it has got no time and length it's basically indicating the project has started so the very first activity is uh, drilling of well uh, which is has a duration of uh, 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 four days then once the well has been dug you should start pump house construction so the pump house is an activity which follows uh, drilling of well this is an activity which takes uh, uh, three days to complete so you can also see how we are doing the forward pass calculation so this is an uh, activity happening right at the beginning so zero add four so early start and early finish and this four moves here and then uh, adding three to it uh, early finish for pump house is uh, seven moving further installation of pump should only be done once pump pump house has been uh, uh, constructed and um, power line laid. So here, two other activities are introduced. The installation of pump, which follows pump house, and uh, uh, this activity has a two days duration. And the power line is an activity which doesn't have any dependence. So it is being put at the start of the project. So this is an activity which will take three days to complete. So here we have got an early start of zero and early finish of three. Uh, and then uh, if we further read installation uh, of pipe, um, uh, will begin once excavation work has been completed. Uh, so here another uh, excavation activity is introduced and the installation of pipe would happen uh, only once excavation has been completed. Uh, after excavation has been completed, lay the foundation which is a uh, four days activity and uh, begin erection of uh, tower and uh, tank. So basically you have to read through uh, the method statement and transfer this into a network uh, diagram to show the logic and the sequence of different activities. And once you have done that, you could do the forward pass and the backward pass calculation to help you calculate what is the early start time, what is the early finish time, what is the late finish time, and what is the late start time. So um, also in the problem, uh, the, there were resources uh, provided for different activities. Uh, so the suggestion was that drilling of well would require four workers per day, delivery of material will require four workers per day. So there are always uh, resources attached uh, to uh, uh, each uh, activity. So uh, we have uh, uh, the, to, we have transferred the information in this uh, forward pass and backward pass into uh, our bar chart. So here, if you see, look at the uh, first activity, which is drilling of well. Uh, this activity has an early start time of zero. So it's starting right at the beginning. And theoretically, uh, the late finish time and the maximum possible time in this activity is um, by um, before uh, week 11. 
11. So basically you have got all the time and you, this activity has a duration of only four weeks. So you have got basically to a choice. Where do you want to deliver? You may decide to work right at the beginning uh, four days and you would have uh, some float right at the beginning. So you have got some uh, uh, float here. So this obviously is not a critical activity. Uh, if you look at the following activity, which is uh, drilling of, um, uh, sorry, delivery of material, which is shown here. Now this activity you can see here has a duration of two, uh, but the early start time is zero and the early finish is six, which is shown by this line here. So you have got the time from here to here to deliver this. And the actual work will only take uh, two, weeks so uh, you could have a float afterwards but excavation here you can see has an early start of zero and early finish of five with the float of uh, uh, which is the five days so the float is zero so this is a critical activity you cannot delay this activity it has to be uh, delivered on time so using uh, the information of early start and early finish we have basically tried to uh, book the space on our bar chart basically highlighting uh, 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 the theoretical possible extremes. So likewise, if you look at power line, uh, which is an activity shown here, this is, has an early start of zero and the late finish of 14 and the actual duration is three. So this activity has got a huge amount of uh, float available. Now the question is, why is it important? Why are we uh, talking about it and what difference uh, it would make? So, uh, here you have see, uh, seen the construction manager has uh, transferred that information to uh, decide where, which are the work days and which are the float days. So the, uh, this is an early start bar chart. So uh, project manager has decided to complete the work on different activities as soon as possible, which is a good strategy because you will have still float towards the uh, end. So if things go wrong, you still have got some uh, cushion to uh, absorb the negative impacts. So the decision was taken to begin uh, work uh, on the earliest possible windows. So for instance, power line, um, the work is to be, take place from uh, week one, two and three. And then we have got a lot of float afterwards. Now this is uh, good, but the <clears throat> this is one possible way to schedule the work. The other possible <clears throat> extreme way, uh, and this could be very good from uh, 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 the main contractor's perspective. The other possible uh, way is that we decide to use float right at the beginning, and uh, we try to work on the late start and late finish uh, approaches. Now. Obviously, this is not the uh, recommended uh, way to go for, because uh, if anything goes wrong, uh, there is no float in the program to uh, absorb uh, the impact so the project would get delayed. However, a lot of uh, project managers, they, while communicating with the, their clients or owners, would use uh, uh, late start bar chart. So rather than telling the client that we will be finishing the work uh, on um, week four for drilling of well, for instance, they will be telling the client that we will be uh, finishing the work before week 10. So they will be using the late start bar chart uh, while communicating with the uh, owners just to ensure that uh, if, if things go wrong, they still have got some time to deliver. So uh, basically uh, we have got uh, uh, two possibilities. Either we could plan our project using an early start time or we could plan our projects using the late start time. Now in this particular problem, you were given certain resources as well. So for instance, it was told that the drilling of well would take uh, four workers per day and delivery of material would take four workers and excavation would take four, five workers and the power line would take uh, six workers. Now, if we uh, decide to do uh, work based on the early start uh, timings, we can see that uh, our resource profile is quite intense at the beginning. So uh, in the uh, week one of our project, we need 19 uh, uh, 
uh, workers. Week two, we need 19 workers. Week three, we need 18 workers. And then we will be firing six workers. And then we will be firing further two, further down the line. And then we will be rehiring them. Now, this is not very good from a flow perspective. Uh, uh, we would like to work with a consistent set of people and we would like, like to keep our crews uh, busy and engaged as long as possible. So um, to address these uh, peaks and troughs in uh, our resource utilization and to ensure we have a leveled resource histogram, uh, we could possibly use the float information. So for instance, here uh, we can see uh, for the power line, it's a quite a resource intensive activity requiring six workers, but it doesn't need to take place right at the beginning. So what about if we move this activity slightly later so that we have a little bit less resource requirement? So the decision is taken to delay power line and moving it slightly later in the cycle. So this will give us a slightly better uh, resource profile. So in this example, we saw how we could uh, use um, uh, the logic diagram to manage our resources. Also, one of the problems which we did in our uh, initial problem sets uh, focused on the uh, cost scheduling. So it may be worth uh, looking into uh, uh, it. Now, coming to uh, some of the problems uh, which are uh, in, in your uh, uh, problem set. So the f first few problems again uh, reinforce the similar concepts and you are asked to do a little bit more uh, uh, practice on the uh, use of this. So as, uh, as I said before, we always assume the projects while manually planning a project starts from day zero. If you are using a software tool, it will be from date to day or you can prescribe a date and here the duration is shown so you can see the early start is here zero and early finish will be uh, three uh, likewise uh, this three would uh, move here and you would have uh, an early finish of uh, six and um, here, uh, uh, this three will move from here to here and an early finish of eight uh, and Three and seven. Now moving to activity F, we can see activity uh, F is a merge activity. Uh, now you could either have six, you can either have eight, or you can have uh, uh, seven. So while doing a forward pass, we choose the largest of the values. So we will be choosing uh, eight over here, and eight at seven is uh, fifteen. Uh, now for activity. A, we will have uh, eight from uh, coming from here and eight add four would be uh, 12. And activity uh, E, the uh, early start time would be uh, seven coming from here and seven add six, uh, which will tell us that in the early finish for activity E is 13. Now activity G is a merge activity where you could either have uh, 12 coming from here or a 15 uh, coming from the top. And as it's a forward pass activity, we will be choosing the largest. So it will be 15 here and 15 at two is 17. And um, for the activity J, either we could have 12 or 13 coming from 12 from in this direction. And we will be using 13 and 13 at three is uh, 16 and activity C uh, either we could have 16 or 17 and we choose the largest values so 17 uh, and 23 so basically it tells us that uh, this project will take 23 weeks to complete uh, based on these calculations and then uh, this would so feel free to uh, use uh, a similar project and you, you can take it to Microsoft Project or uh, any other tool of your choice. Uh, and so in the uh, in the backward pass, we basically uh, reverse uh, the calculation. So this 17 uh, comes here, uh, and then 17 take away 3 is uh, 14. Uh, this 14 would move to activity 
eight and 14 take away uh, six is uh, eight and this eight will move further here and eight take away four is uh, four. Um, over here, uh, in a backward pass, we always choose the smallest of the two values. So we could have chosen 14 or 15, and we ch we've chosen 14 and 14 take away four is uh, uh, 10 and activity it's so is a sort of a activity f is a, so it will be 15 here and 15 take away 7 is 8 and activity h is a merge activity so we should have compared all the three options should have 8 from here uh, 10 from here or 8 and 8 is the smallest value which we will be choosing and uh, activity d the uh, late finish is 8 and 8 take away 3 is uh, 5. So uh, this problem basically prompts you to do a little bit um, more practice uh, and here B is a merge activity again you have, could have okay sorry it's, it should be uh, activity K should be 8 because here 8 from this direction and 10 from uh, this direction we choose the smallest and uh, 8 take away 5 is uh, is 3 and activity B is a merge activity where you will be choosing the smallest of the three options um, which is a K and um, 0 so basically uh, this has given us an idea about the float so now we will be uh, looking at what is the float so uh, float is calculated by subtracting the box at the top from the box at the bottom so float for activity b is uh, zero float for activity d is uh, two float for activity k is zero again uh, and float for activity uh, f appears to be zero and float for activity g appears to be zero and activity C is zero and you can calculate the float of the remaining activity using a similar method. So um, basically our calculations have shown that uh, the critical path with all the zero activities include B, K, uh, F, G and C. So you have to be very careful that these activities get delivered on time and you do not uh, delay it. Uh, similarly, uh, you can practice the question two in the problem set, uh, which is shown here. Now, the tip given to you here is that if you do the calculations right, your uh, duration will be uh, 56 days and uh, your critical path will be uh, this one, HC. J T E and also H C G uh, A and E. So you will have two critical paths, uh, and you can give this from a go. Uh, and uh, there is another problem, uh, which is number three. Um, again, prompting you to uh, do a little bit more practice. And here, the critical path is running through A G M. Uh, B, R, uh, and C if you do it correctly and the project duration should be uh, 41 days. So uh, you can uh, work on it uh, in your uh, time. Right, uh, okay. Now coming to, uh, there was a question which was asked, uh, what are the reasons why do you think uh, uh, it is important to have a scientific approach to uh, project management and it will be good to reflect uh, on this. There could be a number of different uh, reasons. It helps you cope with increasing complexity of modern projects. It uh, could help you better utilize your uh, resources, things like manpower, material, machinery. Uh, it could help you manage your financial um, or fiscal requirements. It's a good tool to communicate effectively among the participants. Uh, it could possibly be used to improve site safety so you would know which contractor is coming on site at what time it, we can achieve higher productivity and uh, things of that sort. And uh, so, so number of different uh, 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 factors. Right now uh, 
in the question five, uh, you, you were given a sort of a situation where the construction contract says that you must finish the work in 40 days from today or uh, you will face uh, the damages of two million pound per day uh, you are late so this is a situation where the um, project sponsor really wants you to finish this project no uh, uh, later than 40 days uh, and the total project cost is 45 million and project is being delivered using accelerated construction method um, in a relatively short duration uh, it's a very high very expensive and a high risk job so the project uh, owner is not willing to make any progress payments. Payments uh, will only be made 40 days from today. So uh, a key uh, constraint here in this uh, particular problem uh, uh, is that this project has to be uh, uh, done not no uh, you can't delay it by any more than 40 days and because damages you have to face are huge um, so uh, it has to be delivered uh, within that and also the another problem is it's a very expensive job uh, owner is not making any progress payments the payments will only be done after the job is delivered and and a client is happy so the uh, it has to be uh, after 40 days. So in, in hypothetically speaking, even if you deliver the job in uh, seven days period, you will not get a payment after seven days. The payment will uh, be released after a 40 days uh, period. So the challenge for you is to decide when you commence the work on site. If you start uh, too early and uh, finish at an early finish time, as a contractor, you stand to lose money in interest invested in the project. So if you are taking an early start approach and finishing this project too early you're not going to get money too early so uh, it will not be in your commercial interest to finish this project uh, far too early because you may be paying too much money to the banker on the other hand if you uh, face a delay the penalties are huge so after a team meeting with senior executive it is decided to commence the work uh, five days earlier than absolutely necessary in order to put a little float in the project and to minimize the risks so here uh, normally we plan uh, the project in a forward pass but here it may be worthwhile planning in a reverse direction because we know that this project uh, has a late finish of 40 we cannot have any more than 40 days so let's start planning from the reverse direction rather than the forward direction so um, using this uh, logic and uh, we would um, be completing the backward pass so 40 takeaway 5 is um, uh, 35 and then and uh, this 35 moves here and 35 take away 6 is uh, 29 uh, and uh, this 29 will come here 29 take away 6 is 23 and uh, then 23 take away 4 is uh, 19 this is the early start for activity C. Uh, for activity uh, uh, two at the top, and this we will be moving 29 here. Uh, 29 take away two is 27, and uh, this 27 comes here as well. 27 take away six is 21. 21 here. 21 take away four is uh, 17, and uh, Uh, 29 moves here 29 take away 25 is 24 24 take away 3 is 27 right so activity uh, 4 is a merge activity we can have either 27 or 19 as it's a backward pass we choose the smallest of the value which is 19 19 take away 4 is uh, 15 uh, now, as it's a backward form pass, we choose the smallest of the three options. We could have chosen 17 from uh, activity J. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
based on this activity s has an early start a late start of um, 14 so uh, basically uh, the late start time is 14 the uh, The problem description states that the senior executives have given you a float of five. So to keep a right balance of not finishing the project too early and at the same time not managing it too late. So uh, as you have got a float of five, what you would do is uh, uh, you, you would leave that float right at the beginning and uh, you, you would have an early start of uh, nine. So 14 take away five uh, would uh, give you an early start time for this project as nine you don't want to start too early uh, and to help accomplish this project uh, by day 40 and with a float of uh, five days on hand you will be beginning uh, at nine and then you will be completing the uh, forward pass uh, accordingly so um, in this example we saw that we can use uh, our uh, deep uh, network diagram and the logic in different ways so previously we have used it to calculate the total duration but in this case we knew the duration very well and we uh, started from doing the backward pass uh, unlike the typical approach where we start by doing a forward pass so this is uh, one of the activities uh, in the problem set and uh, we are expected to uh, complete it uh, the other activity, um, which is uh, question number seven, uh, was uh, included to encourage you to think uh, about the differences between the deterministic and the probabilistic scheduling. So here, the first problem was uh, based on deterministic schedule. So you have been given different activities and their duration and their relationship with the predecessor. So if we uh, look at uh, this and uh, suggested solution, so the first activity here is site preparation. This is the very um, activity starting at the beginning. Then and the following activity is uh, substructure. And here you can see the relationship uh, it is a finish to start relationship so the site preparation must finish before substructure would begin so this is indicated here uh, this activity C is superstructure and it has a relationship with activity B of uh, finish to start which is indicated uh, here and uh, the relationship between activity D and uh, C which is exterior work is again a finish to uh, start relationship here the tricky bits are the activity interior uh, here you can see the activity interior has a relationship with uh, the preceding activity which is activity C superstructure and this relationship is not a finish to start but it's a start to start relationship with the lag of six so we um, indicate an arrow from the beginning of the superstructure activity and with a time lag of six weeks. And activity F, again, it has got a relationship with activity E of a start to start with uh, uh, this. And also it has got another relationship with activity C, which is a finish to start. So here you can see this activity uh, has this relationship finish to start, a start to start and a finish to start. And the last activity is cleanup, which, uh, uh, which must be done once all the jobs have been accomplished. So uh, this is a, an example of a deterministic schedule. So far, all the examples which we have done were based on a determined time. But uh, this is not the case. If you speak to a lot of uh, uh, contractors, uh, uh, subcontractors, they do not give you a definite time period. Usually, they will give you a, a sort of a time bracket. So this was the subject of the last uh, uh, problem, uh, which is uh, on a probabilistic scheduling. So here, the subcontractors are not giving you a definite time period. So for instance, if you look at the first subcontractor, the general contractor believes that it will take eight weeks to complete site preparation, give or take uh, three weeks. So you, you are given a table and you are being asked to identify what is the best possible time, what is the worst possible time, so the pessimistic time and the optimistic time and the most uh, likely time. So uh, here you can see the uh, contractor is suggesting give or take three weeks. So 
possibly five is the best guess, uh, uh, the optimistic time eight is the most likely, and the worst possible time is uh, 11. So using this information, for instance in case of site preparation what is the optimistic duration what is the uh, most likely and what is the pessimistic duration and we will be doing this for all the activities uh, then we will be using a, a formula from uh, statistical uh, science uh, on how to calculate expected activity duration so it's basically um, optimistic duration plus four times the most likely duration to increase the weightage and um, plus and the pessimistic duration divided by six, which will give you an expected activity uh, duration and also a standard deviation. Um, you can Now, uh, planning project is also referred to as a PERT or program evaluation and review technique. You can review more <clears throat> in the background and reading notes. Uh, so uh, we will be using, again, the uh, precedence diagram method and uh, we'll be using uh, these calculations of the expected activity duration to draw uh, our uh, network diagram. All right, so we have uh, discussed uh, most of the uh, problems in the set. The uh, last problem uh, was uh, focused on developing uh, self-storage uh, building and you have been uh, provided with a network diagram and you have been asked to complete the forward pass and the backward pass so it's uh, I'm not going to delve uh, again into it but uh, using uh, what we have learned so far we would be completing the forward pass so again starting from uh, day zero and adding the duration uh, to subsequent and this will help us calculate the uh, early start times and early finish time so it will basically tell us how soon we can begin work on any activity once we have completed the um, uh, forward pass then we will be moving the early finish time to the late finish time and then we will be doing the backward pass so here the calculations are of the backward pass are uh, shown so starting from 35 to 34 so it will be good to do uh, a little bit practice and then you can compare uh, your answers with the one shown on the uh, uh, screen. And once you have uh, done this thing, uh, the next thing will be to calculate the float. So just a reminder, a float is calculated by subtracting the box at the uh, um, uh, bottom from the box at the top. So the formula for float is basically uh, LF, uh, which is late finish minus uh, early finish, or uh, a late start uh, uh, minus early start. So we we do the uh, float calculations, and using this, we can see that those activities with zero uh, are falling on our critical path. So basically, our critical path is running here, uh, and then uh, it's going to the top, and from here, uh, so all the activities lying on this path are called uh, are on our critical path now moving on uh, uh, you were asked to convert the work days into the calendar days right so it's meaningless to say that uh, shingle roof is starting on day 16 of my uh, project to a subcontractor because your yeah, subcontractor may not understand what is the day 16 so it's very important to convert this day 16 into what is the calendar date so is it maybe 28th of march or 29th of march so in this particular problem we are assuming that the project is starting i uh, put here one but i, I thought it's uh, uh, the second of march so the problem given uh, in the problem is that you have to assume that problem and it's starting so 2nd of March is a Friday so work cannot be done on such a on the weekend so 2nd is a Friday so work will recommence on uh, 5th and 5th of March 5th 6th uh, 7 8 and 9 and then we will have a two days weekend and and the work will recommence on uh, 12th of March. 
right? So um, we, we have to map our calendar day uh, and the work days are obviously going in sequence. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the, this is, so this, uh, for instance, uh, this is fourth day of my project, but that's 7th of March. Uh, and then using this, we have to uh, decide when, you know, which are the work dates and which are the calendar days. So uh, once drawn, your bar chart may look quite similar to this one. Now in this bar chart, uh, basically and the red activities shows and uh, the activities which are critical and the uh, activities with a yellow highlight indicate the float. So here in this activity, work is taking place only on uh, installation of temporary power uh, on one day and we still have got a healthy float of uh, around five days. And likewise, so you can see the uh, red showing activities which are critical, which should not be delayed, which must be delivered on time. Any further delay on the uh, critical activity would uh, um, cause and delay into your uh, project. Now, there are certain scenarios uh, which are uh, given. So the first activity you were asked to do was that, how will you communicate this uh, Gantt chart with uh, other team members? How would you communicate it with the owners or with subcontractors? So while communicating uh, this information with the uh, subcontractors, you do not need to give them uh, the float information. All you need to give them is when they have to arrive on site and what is the date they have to finish. And so the float is uh, sensitive information, which as a construction manager, as a site manager, you should be keeping uh, close to your heart and don't go about uh, telling the whole world uh, about it. So uh, we we could have three or different versions of uh, this Gantt chart. So uh, the version for the for yourself or for your project management team would be the most comprehensive one. So it will have an information of about the duration of different activities, what is the total float, what is the early start time, what is the early finish time, the late start, late finish. So here, uh, various information such as which date of the month your activity is starting, what would be the late, uh, late start date. So this would help you see uh, how to better manage your resources. But when it comes to communicating uh, with your subcontractors uh, working on this, uh, you, you do not, do not uh, float information has been removed. We are not sharing the float information. We are just telling them which contractor is coming on site at which particular time. Uh, and we do not need to share the float information. If things go wrong, uh, we could still use it, uh, but uh, possibly in our version, we could remove this information. Now, when we speak to the contract uh, owners, we uh, may perhaps uh, give them not the early start and the early finish time. It may be perhaps better to uh, just give the late start and the late finish time, uh, because if there's any delay in the early finish and the owners, uh, uh, so, in the, while communicating with owners, we could just communicate the late start and late finish time and the, uh, we could remove the float information. So we saw that uh, the same bar chart uh, could be adapted to needs of different people and uh, we do not need to share uh, all the information uh, with everyone. Now, you were given uh, certain scenarios in this uh, um, activity. The first uh, scenario was that the work commenced on the project according to the schedule. So everything was going uh, as pl pl plan. Things were going according to plan. John was the carpenter involved in framing of exterior walls. So this is the activity uh, which has been uh, uh, the focus of this particular scenario. So the, John was working on this activity. Uh, he started work on schedule, however, two days after commencement, he gives you a ring informing that because of the weather related factors, framing the exterior walls will take seven days to complete rather than five as originally scheduled. Is this a problem? Uh, and is there a need to inform the project client at this stage? Now, one thing very obvious is and that this is a critical activity. And the guy is here sitting at this point of time, uh, two days in, and he's saying this activity is not taking three, but it will take five days to complete. Now, as it's a critical activity and with a two days delay mean that your overall project is getting delayed by two. So your project cannot be delivered 
in day 35 and it will now, now be uh, calculated uh, completed in day 37 so as this activity which uh, has been delayed uh, 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 is a critical activity so this is the question was is this a problem yes it is a big problem because uh, your uh, critical activity has been delayed which means that your project will be delayed by two months is there a need to inform a project client or a sponsor at this stage yes there is a, a clear need so that um, uh, he, he or she is uh, aware of the uh, uh, full picture now scenario two uh, uh, further uh, builds on this so um, you basically give a call to your project uh, client informing her that the project will be delayed now she doesn't like the sound of this and asks you to ensure project is delivered as per contractually bound agreed upon schedule or see, she will see you in the court so the project client is not flexible and she doesn't like a delay of uh, two weeks so uh, what do you do with this uh, so on one hand and the framing of exterior walls cannot be completed because of a weather related factor so it is getting delayed and on the other hand the uh, project's client is not willing to give you uh, two more uh, days so in this situation uh, you were uh, asked to explore different options uh, of how you can uh, squeeze uh, two days from rest of the uh, plan and some of the options given included that uh, the contractor working on windows and doors uh, which is which is this contractor uh, uh, which uh, and the uh, painting of exterior which is in this contractor both of them offered you uh, um, to save uh, two days from their schedule maybe at an extra cost will you take an offer now both of these are non critical activities and even if they save you some time and this is not going to have any impact because these are non critical activities so there's no point uh, uh, taking up their offer so you can uh, politely decline this the part B of uh, scenario two is which activities you can consider for acceleration to get back on schedule so uh, the only activities you should consider for getting back on schedule are the critical activities those shown in red because they will help you get back on track so you it may be a case for you um, uh, speaking to the uh, contractors working on critical activities um, and the question was what will be your key decision making criteria while selecting activities to accelerate now obviously uh, you have to ensure and uh, that the uh, first of all if an activity can be accelerated shifts or bring in more manpower or uh, equipment to get the project back on track but you have also to see the impact it has on project cost the impact it has on project quality and project health and safety so your uh, decision has to take all those uh, considerations as you thought about which activities to accelerate and part c and uh, talked about which practical strategies can be deployed to accelerate uh, project activities so very often contractors use strategies such as, such as increasing their resources so they will bring more people they will bring more machinery or use different type of material or more costly material whatever they may decide to do work over weekends so they could do overtime or multi shifts or you can also look into is there a chance to uh, uh, change the logic to have uh, two or more activities uh, going on in parallel. If you have got too many finished to start relationships, it is quite time consuming. So uh, looking uh, into those sort of uh, considerations uh, will be good. The scenario three uh, here was that the project client just called you. She wants you to explore if you can pour a 12 inches thick slab instead of a six inches as uh, it was originally uh, planned. So you were originally planning to pour a six inches uh, slab. Now she, the owner wants you to pour, put a 12 inches slab. At the same time, she wants project delivered on time and is not guaranteeing uh, granting any extension of the contract time. So the 
uh, owner is asking you, pushing you say, to put a slightly thicker slab, but she is not willing to give you time any more than the 35 working days uh, which are available. So uh, the scenarios further elaborates that you call in a relevant subcontractor who tells you the time to form and pour 12 inches a slab will be uh, will cost eight days. So will you entertain client's request as a goodwill guest chair? Uh, I think it, it will be very hard to uh, delay a critical activity by three days. This is going to introduce an element of uncertainty. Uh, so completing in eight days means your project and completion is extended, which again is not acceptable by the client. So I think sometime a good project manager has to learn to say no as well. And it appears like this is the case. Um, and uh, further ask what, what other choices are available to you. Uh, either you can explore uh, accelerating the subsequent activities, uh, but very often that involves extra cost. Uh, and in this particular case, your, it looks like your client is not willing to pay any extra cost, not willing to give you any extra time, um, but just asking you uh, to do something as a favor, which uh, I think may be a case of uh, saying politely uh, no, uh, because it's a critical activity. and. So uh, the scenario four uh, further elaborates that a uh, contractor working on install the sliding activity started on time. So we are talking here uh, about installing the uh, sliding activity. So it is this guy over here. Uh, but because of a delayed deliveries ended up taking seven days to complete rather than uh, four. Uh, which was originally planned will this delay the project so here you can see install the sliding activity has got a very healthy float so a slight delay would not um, have a big impact but uh, what actions will you take after knowing that activity installing the slide is taking uh, seven days to complete so here you have looked at the uh, Garant chart and you have seen it is not uh, a critical activity so you can still accommodate but the question is what other activities you need to uh, take so you need to go back to uh, your uh, logic diagram and see uh, for instance uh, here that in the install the sliding activity uh, is followed immediately by painting the exterior so any delays in installing the sliding even though it's not impacting your project deadline uh, but still you need to uh, give a call to paint exterior contractor inform them that the sub preceding activity has been delayed so that uh, uh, they know that they will be arriving on site uh, with the slight uh, delayed time and uh, and what will be your course of action so just make sure that uh, the uh, material get delivered on uh, time so and um, all highlighting to a very proactive uh, approach required uh, the last uh, scenario bit talked about the project owner just calls, calls you and uh, call you she has decided to change uh, roof shingles from asphalt to uh, tile so this uh, was a situation here and uh, she has decided to make a change uh, you speak to a relevant contractor who informs you it will take five days to install uh, rather than two as a reason. so there's a bit of a typo here so, so in actual there was two uh, what uh, uh, will that affect the project completion date? So again, this will have no impact because it's a, a non-critical activity. You still have got some float available. Uh, so all you have to ensure is that material get delivered on time. So uh, this was uh, uh, it. Also, uh, students are encouraged to uh, uh, take this problem on to Microsoft uh, uh, project and uh, solve it in a uh, Microsoft uh, project. So let me uh, share the right screen with you. So uh, Uh, so you can use uh, any tool of your choice, but the idea was that you could uh, discuss. So first thing was uh, to uh, 
possibly draw a network diagram quite similar to it. So there are certain tips uh, given here in terms of uh, using uh, a software tool. Uh, so the first is that do not try to know every feature of the software uh, because there are quite a few features and uh, students get uh, bogged down by the complexity of the software. So it's very important to stay with the fundamentals and become proficient in areas that will help you deliver. So we have been learning, first of all, how to draw a network diagram. So let's, rather than getting bogged down by all this, let's focus on how to draw a network diagram. So there are two views uh, in which you can start working on a project. One is the Gantt chart view where you can add the uh, tasks directly at the duration and it will and draw. Uh, but as we want to do the network diagram first, as we have been doing in manual problems, we will try to open the network diagram view. So on the top menu, there is a view option. Uh, you can view uh, your project in a number of different ways, the resource views. Uh, we select the more views uh, option here. And from here, I will select the uh, a network diagram because that's the sort of a view uh, I want. So here you will see um, we are uh, we are trying to draw a network diagram basically. Um, uh, indicating the relationship between different activities. Uh, so starting with the excavation uh, and then forming and pouring of slab and the critical activities are shown in red. I can see one issue here, the insulate activity uh, uh, has a relationship with the drywall activity. Uh, so we click on the drywall and we define the predecessors for it. So one of the predecessor for it is uh, insulate as well so so you know you will see an an arrow um, uh, <clears throat> forming here so um, students were encouraged to draw a network diagram view uh, and uh, similar to this so this will help us see the logic of uh, different activities uh, and uh, then there was uh, certain resources uh, attached and so uh, this is the Gantt chart view and in the Gantt chart view you can see and the column over here we can assign different resources so for instance different activities have got different contractors working so we have got excavation contractor as a resource electrical concrete and we, we want to leave certain notes for this uh, which, which are given in your hand 